Hey, and welcome to my channel and of course to this video. Today I was thinking I would do a little furry animal, a squirrel, and I've been asked a lot to do some animal painting and well, I'm not I did not really do that myself a lot. So, I was trying to find a simple way to do that, a looser way to do that, and I think I have managed it to break it down into a few simple steps and I hope you will be able to follow this and also to end up with one finished at least nice piece. And first I did uh, make my sketch earlier on just a regular printing paper and, and then trace it onto my watercolor paper. The sketch is of course available for download from my website. There is a link down in the description box. So go ahead, check it out and download it for yourself. First thing I did, I did not prevent the paper this time because I've noticed that it actually looks quite better if I do not prevent the paper. So I decided not to do that. And I'm just preparing a couple of paints. I've mixed in some, uh, this time I'm using White Knight. So I've just mixed in Cadmium Yellow Medium and a little bit of Raw Sienna, a little bit of Burnt Sienna and some Sepia also mixed with Burnt Sienna. I've started from the tail of the squirrel and just painted in the right edge of the tail with the darkest color with some Sepia. Then moved on to the part next to it that is uh, burnt sienna and then at the end i have used that mix of raw sienna and cadmium yellow medium to paint in the left side and i did not paint that darker actually the the darkest uh, color is nearest to the right edge where the color starts so the sepia is darkest nearest to the edge also raw si uh, burnt sienna is the darkest next to the sepia and also that mix of yellows is the darkest again next to burnt sienna so going from the right to left the color is a little bit less and less saturated so when finished with that i've just added a little bit more of the pigment where i saw fit and all the time i'm not just doing those uh, straight uh, line shapes i'm just tipping with my brush and that is the way also that you will get a little bit more of the texture in the paint also i've tapped in my paper so to help paint bleed slightly but before that i've used the brush with just the clean water and then picked up the edges just softened the edges and also since there is a water and i've added a water they will slightly bleed outside the borders after that i've sprinkled just a little bit salt on the edges on the left edges where that mix of yellows is and then tapped in a little bit with a small very very small brush i've tapped in a little bit of just clean water to pick up the pigment here and there and when it dries it will give a beautiful fluffy effect And while the paint is still wet on on the tail i'm moving in to moving to the body of my squirrel and this time i started again i did not prevent i'm using this quite larger brush that has uh, natural bristles and um, this is a mop brush it can hold quite amount of water so maybe you should use a brush that can hold a lot of water if you use a maybe synthetic brush that cannot hold a lot of water you, you could not get the same effect maybe that in that case you should prevent your paper before adding the paint this one can hold a lot of water a lot of pigment so i did not again prevent i started with the yellow just tapped it in uh, almost on the entire squirrel just the part where the belly is I did not then with a little bit uh, darker pigment that's uh, burnt sienna I've tapped in again here and there just minding where the darker parts of my squirrels uh, squirrel is and also then added a little bit of the sepia just in the parts where that would be in the shadow and now with a smaller brush I'm just adding it a little bit more of the details now I don't want a large uh, blobs on my paper I do want it a little bit tinier details so I'm doing leggings of my squirrel and also around the ears and here and there are some details When finished with that, I just left it to dry completely to salt to do its thing and also the water. And you can see right now the finished piece it looks quite nice. I won't be adding anything more to the tail. I like it just the way it is. And this time I've used a very, very light wash of yellows. 
and it just went glazed all over my squirrel because I did want it to well I did want it to add that glaze I do believe it just adds a little bit more of the shyness and the colors don't look so flat when I add a little glaze of yellow on top now with a black I've just added where her mouth are a little bit little tiny dot on her snout I think it's snout and then added uh, which I've painted also with a mix of uh, very very little bit of black and just a little little bit of ultramarine so to get that somewhat a grayish color grayish blue color and also same color I used for her uh, belly and also for the eyes And then I just left it to dry completely and now I'm adding in the details again I mixed ultramarine and black to get that bluish gray color very light wash and just adding it here and there and I noticed that it just brings up the painting so live when I add those colors it just gives the contrast to those browns and yellows that we used and just here and there you can see me on the top of her neck on her hands and also on her belly I've added that mix of colors now again while the paper is still dry I did not prevent I'm adding a little bit more of the pigment a little bit more of the mix of burnt sienna and sepia on the parts that are dark on my reference and where I see that the shadows are and the hair is actually the the darkest and again a little bit more of the details I, I switched to a little bit of smaller brush that can hold a little bit less water so I do not want it to spread so much and I'm adding some of the lines again for the darkest shadows ears I have painted again in that mix but I did add a little bit of the black that's for the darkest parts of the of the ears I am painting um, now the eyes while the paint is still wet around uh, around it uh, on the face but I do not actually advise you to do that because if you just go a little bit overboard and touch the paint that is uh, get to the water that that paper that is still wet it will bleed so have patience don't be like me let it to dry and then paint in the eyes you can definitely do that when it's dry so don't don't be impatient use your hair dryer dry it and you know you don't want that bleed it happened to me on my practice piece so it was I was really upset with myself but I just couldn't help it here also I had just had to do it so just you can see also that one part around her eye is a little bit uh, lighter so just keep in mind to leave that part also a little bit lighter some dry brushing technique again on her belly and on the back of her neck making it look like there are some hairs and now I'm using this very very pointy uh, small small um, brush to add in the details and to add in hair like shapes so just here and there on the edges of her hands on the edges of her uh, arms uh, her ears and her leggies I'm adding just those little little wiggly lines to making it look as though there is some hair there I've painted in the eye now the darker part the lower part a little bit darker upper part a little bit lighter a snout and then adding a little bit of uh, that burnt sienna mixed in with just a little bit of mother like red light to get this rose color just above the that one dot that I did on her snout and also just above her eye and doing a little bit more couple of details here and there now I'm painting in the hairs mustaches going out of her snout and for that I am using that uh, burnt sienna mixed in with a little bit of raw sienna just a couple of light hairs and 
well I guess that is uh, basically it I will be doing a little bit more of the details just uh, keep in mind look at your painting and just see if there is some details necessary don't go overboard we don't want it to be very realistic this is a looser painting and it doesn't have to be realistic it just has to give the notion that it is a squirrel that it it should just have those couple of highlights and shadows so just that those highlights and shadows do make it look 3d so that is the reason why we do that to make it look as it has a shape it's not just flat and that is basically it don't go overboard with that a little bit more lines here and there on the body just to add again that feeling of uh, hair and that one little white dot to her eye that just makes all the difference it makes that eye completely alive and with black I've just added it to her mustaches on her face just to make them a little bit more visible and that is actually it you don't have to do this add this uh, green for the for the background for the grass I did add it just here and there because I did not finish it in the lower part I did not finish my squirrels so I just had to do it had to add something to make it look like it's standing on something so just a little bit of topped in with uh, this is chromium oxide a little bit of the sprinkles and I've added just a little bit of ultramarine between in between her hands like she is to make it look like she is holding something and that is basically it you can actually do your background even more detailed I did not want it to I do wanted to make my squirrel a focus so everything in the background is absolutely at your will and well uh, that is basically it I did have a hard time uh, getting to this break it down into the steps but I do believe this is uh, I guess the easiest way I could have find for now to paint in that little cute animal I hope you liked this video I hope it was helpful to you and if you do please hit the like button share it comment and if you haven't still please do subscribe to my channel that really mean a lot to me maybe consider joining my channel that's that join next to the subscribe I'll click on that listen to the offer and this side Again, guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.